Hey everyone, Randy with Extreme Sandbox. Today, we're gonna to show you how to operate a wheel loader. So we get lots of people that we get to come out here, show them how to use this equipment every day. So we thought we'd do a quick overview video just to show you how to operate the basic controls in our Komatsu wheel loader. So let's check it out. First, it's always three points of contact anytime you get in equipment. You always wanna make sure the doors are locked all the way open. After you get in any piece, it's always about putting your seatbelt on first. And then for any equipment, again, doors can be locked open, but we generally recommend having them closed. There's a latch on these loaders right there. Okay, so seatbelt is on. First thing we wanna do is start this thing. Okay, so first thing after you start the equipment, I'm just overviewing the dashboard, make sure there's no warning symbols, anything like that, uh, and we're ready to go. So now just make some minor adjustments. Uh, again, we're gonna be going over our Komatsu WA270 wheel loader. Uh, controls are pretty similar with different brands out there, um, but again, I'm gonna go over specific to what Komatsu is, and uh, yeah, so we'll show you those. First and foremost, the seat position, you wanna be comfortable on a wheel loader. So I'm gonna make some minor adjustments. The Komatsu loaders we have have an air ride seat. If I just pull that once, it'll actually be auto adjust based on my weight, so it feels good. I'm gonna pull myself forward, okay? Again, seat belts on, there is usually an armrest on the side here. Pull it down so I feel comfortable on the loader here. So now I just wanna do a quick overview on the controls while inside the cab here. Um, there's several different ways, configurations to operate a wheel loader. Uh, most typically for the smaller models, they've still got a steering wheel in them. And then your right is your tool control, basically your boom and bucket control. Uh, you will see in uh, other wheel loaders, as they get larger, they are going away where there's taking the steering wheel out and it's a second joystick on the left to do your steering. Um, so that might be one other configuration you'd see, but probably most typical is just the standard steering wheel in there. So if we look at it, if we start kind of right to left over here, uh, on the right is my controls for, if I need to make any adjustments uh, for my ways to change the, uh, the shifter on this, there are two different ways to shift the Komatsu loaders. They either have a button here on the joystick, that's forward, neutral, reverse right here. They also have a shifter on the left side of the steering column. Typically out here, we always just teach with the left hand. It's better because it's just left is driving, right is your tool control. That's the easier way for anyone new to learn, but a more advanced operator might just do everything with their right thumb. And in that case, there are buttons over here to basically switch which configuration you're gonna be using. The other controls are more like traction control. So there's always settings. We keep ours on automatic, which will, if I switch these switches, it'll tell me on the display as well. I see an A on there. Uh, generally automatic is what you want. That'll keep your wheels from spinning. But if you needed to go to max, it'll basically put as much where it might almost start spinning your tires when you're going into a, a load. But generally automatic is the best. Again, your right joystick is gonna be your boom and bucket controls that I'll show you here in a moment. Uh, and then we have a lockout lever. This red switch to the right is basically locking out this joystick. So you see nothing works on this. So that eventually I'll activate it that way. Looking over in front, again, our Komatsu loaders have a backup camera right here to my right corner so I can see. And then looking at the dashboard, again, all the standard uh, configuration con uh, warnings, indicators that I would need on there. Um, for a Komatsu on the right side, the blue buttons are always your climate control. So I have an automatic climate control in here that'll set that all the blue buttons here. I can also ask uh, access any of the menus um, with the little buttons below it. On the left side, I've got lights. Uh, I've got a, basically an auto kind of a, uh, a ride control switch here that basically controls my boom when I'm driving. It'll make some minor adjustments to make the ride a little bit less stiff. So that's one there. We got lights, switches over there. And then I have this one switch that is my disconnect, my bucket. It's got a quick connect on there so you can put different accessories and attachments on there. And then the steering column. Again, steering wheel usually has this little left steering knob. Um, this thing I'll show you in a moment, it'll basically swing the cab both directions. So the key there is the front wheels don't actually turn, the entire machine pivots. This is live, even with the parking brake on. And then shifter on here, I got my speed settings on the side of this, one, two, three, and four. We usually start out at two. Um, on the right side is standard, you got lights, got wipers, things like that. Probably the most important there in the beginning, and I went over the 
lockout on the right side for the joystick, more importantly, my parking brake. You'll see a red switch on the dash and on the display I've got a red P. That means this thing isn't gonna go anywhere. If I try and put it in forward, it basically beeps at me right now, telling me I'm still in park and it's not gonna let me go anywhere. Then down for your feet, really standard. You got a gas pedal and a brake pedal right there. Uh, the brake, usually on these, there are two different. The brake pedals are connected, so you can use your right or left. We generally teach new operators, just use your right foot, because that's most typical what people are using uh, when they drive their car. Uh, and a more advanced operator might use both, because you can give it some power while you're going in. We can also apply some brake. There's some different stra uh, techniques there, but for new operators, it's easier just to use your right foot. And that's all the basic controls for the wheel loader. Okay, so now some of the basic operations. Again, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to toggle this switch. That'll make my right joystick live. So now, with this one, the boom in the bucket control, if I pull back, you'll see the boom will start raising. Now, most excavators have an auto level. I'm sorry, most wheel loaders have an auto level that'll basically curl the bucket away. So it's doing that automatically for me. That's so it doesn't curl material over the back end. So that is up in the air. If I go right hand to the right, it's going to dump the bucket. And if I go right hand to the left, we'll close the bucket. And then right hand forward is what brings that back down. Okay, so now next we're gonna go into driving the wheel loader. So now let's go over driving. So the next piece there, we want to get that boom and bucket in driving position. And generally, what we recommend is down below your dashboard. Obviously, if it was any higher, I wouldn't be able to see over it. But you also don't want to have it too low, because if I have it all the way to the ground, it will absolutely just drag along. And, and you really don't want to drag the bottom of your bucket. So a few feet off the ground. Now, we teach our buckets to our clients to be closed. So right now, you can see it's kind of curled all the way up. A lot of operators will probably drive with the bucket ready to dig, which is kind of a flat configuration where they're ready to go down. Um, that's probably the more norm. Uh, that way they're ready to go right into a pile. But again, for us, we like to keep it curled just to be safe, because if you have it open too much and you're driving a little bit uneven, you do have the potential of that digging into the ground, which would not be good. So my boom and bucket are controlled. Now I'm gonna go over and take off my parking brake. Again, don't do this until you're actually ready to drive. So I'm gonna click this switch and parking brakes off. The machine is then live, so we're ready to drive. So if I have my left on hand on this knob, I've got my shifter here on the left side. I'm gonna click it into forward. And then if I just give it some gas, it'll start going straight. Now again, the big thing with the wheel loader is the front tires are not gonna turn at all. It's actually the entire machine pivots. So if I go all the way to the right, articulates at the center of the machine. So I go all the way that way all the way to the left. This is how you turn the wheel loader. The front tires aren't actually turning. It's the center of the machine's pivoting. So that's forward. I hit stop, put it in reverse, and I can start backing up. I do have a backup camera there I can look at, but it's also good to look out your mirrors, look over your shoulder, know where you're backing up. And I'll stop there. You always try and stop with your foot, put it in neutral, put it back and forward. And now we're ready to drive back around. So. This time I'm going to drive around this dirt pile in front of us and we're going to come over and we'll show you how to scoop. So ideally you want to be lined up straight on the pile. You don't necessarily want to come in at an angle. So once I'm lined up fairly straight here, now it's just getting my bucket in the right configuration. So I'm going to open the bucket up. Obviously you can't drive in with that thing curled up. So you generally want your blade to be horizontal level. The best way at the sandbox here on our buckets, you'll see little red lines actually on top of our bucket corners that kind of matches the blade angle because you're gonna notice sitting on behind this thing, most new operators, you can't see the bucket. So it's really judging if you look at the lines on the top of the wheel loader, there's usually a straight line on the bucket that gives you a good indication what that blade angle is. You don't wanna be too, if you're too open, you're gonna dig a big basically trench right in front of you. You also don't want to have it curled up though. So once you're lined up, you bring it down to the ground. Usually I'll, I might touch the ground and then pull it back just to get it about six inches off the ground. And then we're ready. We're always already in forward gear. So I'm going to drive straight in. 
And if I just give it gas, you'll see it's just stopping on its own because of the auto traction control. Now, what you don't want to do is if I just curl it up right now and I can demonstrate this, you'll see it basically just took one scoop, but there's very little fill. Like I can raise this up and just get enough room so you have that you can dump it. And then I go to the right. That dumps it, but there wasn't much in there. So the proper way to do that, I'm gonna back up so I can get line back up. Put it back and forward. Come down to that ground. Again, make sure I'm flat. Now really to, to get a full load, you have to be driving into this pile while you're pulling back in your right hand to really fill that bucket. Then at the very end is usually when you're curling. Uh, it's usually right around your dashboard level. So for a new operator, I generally recommend just going straight into this pile. Again, same way till it's stuck. Now, instead of just curling though, this is where you want to start giving it some, you know, you're hitting your gas on it to give it some power. You'll see my wheels are starting to spin. I'm going to keep giving it gas. I'm going to keep pulling on my right hand. And then as I'm going, pulling back, I'm also just adding a little bit of curl at the same time. And that's really giving me a full bucket. So you can see how I got a much fuller load on that one. And that because I was pulling up into it, really scooping that up. Now, before I back up, you do not want to raise this any higher. This is where a wheel loader is very top heavy. So in general, I'm going to hit it straight in reverse because I can back straight away from that pile. As I'm backing up though, I need to bring this back down into a driving position. So I'm going to bring it down. It's curled all the way up, generally right below the dash. Again, you want to be able to see over this thing. And then I would basically drive to the other side where I'm going to be able to dump it. The key here is low and tight. You've got a very heavy load hanging out in front of you. That's where it's important that you stay low to the ground. You do not want to be driving a wheel loader with that bucket way up in the sky. And then we're going to come back around. And again, really important to try and straighten up. You don't necessarily want to go in like a side like this and start pulling back. The machine's a lot more stable when it's basically lined up straight. Now, as I'm coming forward slowly, this is where I can start raising it up. And you're gonna need enough room to be able to clear when you dump. So the bucket's gonna come down about three or four feet. Now, you don't wanna let your tires drive up the mound. So this is where I'm kind of watching my tires. I can start feeling it sway a little bit there. And then once I have enough room, I'm going to go right hand to the right to dump it. There you go. And then the final thing I always, we teach our clients to close it again, just to make sure it's in the closed position all the way. Now, the excavators have, or I'm sorry, the wheel loaders have different auto sets. So for an operator, it can kind of return to dig. So on the Komatsu, if I just go all the way like this in my left hand, it'll stop and you can set that difference. So that way when I go down, it's maintaining that. This is for someone doing repetitive, like loading a dump truck, something like that. All they're gonna have to do after they dump so if I'm dumping right there, I can go ahead and click it in reverse and with my left, right hand, I can just click like that and it's gonna take it to return to dig. So it gives that angle, I bring it right back down and it's ready to go. It's holding the angle. Again, you can set that at different settings you need. Take one more scoop. Again, I'm giving it gas and going in at the same time. And that's ideally what you want. You want to see a really full bucket. Now the key here, again, is low and tight. Low to the ground. As I'm driving, again, I'm keeping it kind of below my dash. I don't want to be down any lower. You'll see if I go down any lower, not only do I lose some of my material, but I'm also going to start dragging that. So that's why it's key to be just a little bit off the ground. straighten out. And again, this is where when we start raising it up,
This is where you're really at the riskiest spot in a wheel loader. These machines, as you see, they sway very top heavy. This is not something you want to do. You do not want to be driving around reverse. You see how the whole machine is swaying. This is where you're at the most risk with a wheel loader. So loading a dump truck, anything above your cab, this is where it's very important to be nice and slow. Make sure you're not backing up. You're not making any sudden uh, changes in direction. Go up there. And dump. So that's the basics on how to dig with a wheel loader. Now the other thing you can do with a wheel loader is floating the blade, really the bucket I should say. Uh, it's kind of similar to a dozer uh, or even a skid steer can do this as well. But I'll show you there's two kind of primary ways to do this. If I drive out here. So there's basically a way to disengage the hydraulics to the boom. So what you want to do with that is I'm going to set this thing down flat on the ground right there. I feel I'm flat. With the Komatsu wheel loader, if I just take this joystick and just basically jab it forward a little bit, you see it's actually sitting in the forward position. I can take it out of flow right there. This is also very similar to what you do in a skid steer. So most skid steers are the same way as you jab that forward and disengages the boom. I can still curl and uncurl, but what you're going to notice is the boom itself is disengaged. So it's just taking the weight of that bucket. You only want to do this in reverse. You would never want to be driving forward. What it does, it kind of compacts down so it smooths out things. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a slope there where it's flat and I'm going to hit, I'm going to reverse. And again, you'll see how it kind of just flattens thing out. It kind of compacts it. You could have a load of dirt in there if you wanted some more weight to really push down on it. I'm watching where I'm backing up my backup camera. And then the key there is at the end, I pulled it out of float. You don't necessarily, I don't want to just pick it up because there might be a pile of dirt behind my bucket. So I'm going to keep backing up a little bit and then just let it trail out easily on its own. So it's in the air. That's one way when I went flat with the bucket. The other way, you can kind of do this bucket down. It really takes it out more if there's more uh, rough terrain there. So if I raise this up and I can see I'm basically looking behind my bucket right now. I can see the bottom of the blade. So I'm going to go down, touch it. Now again, you can see the difference here. I can actually, this will start to pick up my front end. You see right now the boom is powerful enough to pick up the machine. So you don't want to be doing that. I just want to be gently touching the ground. And then again, if I just put that in, right now it's just floating. It's just right the weight of the bucket is on there. So now I'm going to hit it in reverse again. And same thing, I can see behind, I'm watching where I'm reversing. And it's a little bit rougher, but it also evens things out. It's almost like using a dozer blade. Now again, at the end of this, if I were just pick this up right now, I'd have a big pile of dirt. And that's not what you would want. So I'm going to keep it down there. It's out of float, so now I actually have the machine holding it up. And I'm going to keep backing up a little bit and try and just let this trail off. If I have to pull back a little bit on my right hand, again, I'm still watching where I'm driving. I might have to push it forward, but you see I've kind of left a nice smooth motion there. Perfect. And then to park the machine, generally I'm putting it there. I want to rest my bucket flat, ideally. Put it down on the ground. For the Komatsu, I'm going to go ahead and disengage the lockout lever. I'm sorry, engage the lockout lever for my bucket control. So you see now that does not, doesn't work. And it's always important to put your parking brake on. So I verify I have a red P on there so I know the machine's not going to go anywhere. After that, pick this up, seat belt off. I'm going to slide my seat back, turn my machine on, and then open my door. Make sure they lock in place and then always three points of contact. So that's how you operate our Komatsu wheel loaders. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Please post in the comments if you have any more questions or if you're an operator has some tips or tricks, please post that in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode.